All right, in this lesson, we're gonna go over the closing entries from the last lesson. So we're actually gonna show you the journal entries that are associated with the closing process. So let's kind of review what we already know. So what we already know is that we'll have to prepare the closing trial balance after this, and we are trying to get rid of our revenue and expenses and our dividends. Now, in this case, we don't have any dividends, so I'm gonna show you kind of what it would look like, but we don't have any dividends here. We also know that this is step two, and in step two, we have three entries that we have to do. The first step is we're gonna to have to close all of our revenue accounts. The second step is we're gonna to have to close all of our expense accounts. And the third one is we're gonna close all of our dividend accounts. And we're gonna close all of them to the retained earnings account. So those are the two things that we already know. So let's kind of dive right in to the actual journal entry. So we'll start with the first one here. Step number one, or the first journal entry, is that we're gonna close all of our revenue accounts to retain earnings. So this is a partial unadjusted trial balance, so that's why it doesn't look like it's a proper. Um, so we are going to go ahead and remove the revenue account. So in this case, we've got two revenue accounts. We've got a $7,500 service revenue, and we have a $2,500 sales revenue. So to close them out, we have to make them zero. So we have, we have to basically debit or credit the opposite of what it already is to get it to zero. So the right side means credit, the left side means debit. So in this case, we have a credit of 7,500 and a credit of 2,500. To remove that, we're gonna have to debit the account. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna debit those two accounts for their respective amount. So in this case, we're gonna debit service revenue for $7,500 and we're gonna debit sales revenue for $2,500. So that takes care of zeroing them out. So if you look at a T for instance, service revenue would have 7,500 and because of this entry, we'll debit it 7,500, which would give us zero. So that's again, what we're trying to do is create, make these all zeros at the end of the day. So we've got that, what are we missing? Well, now we are missing a credit. So in this case, we're gonna credit, we know what the balance is gonna be, right? So 7,500 plus 2,500, we've gotta have at least a credit of $10,000 because all the debits must equal all the credits. So when we do that, um, we're just missing the account name. So up here it says close all of the revenue accounts to retained earnings. So we're gonna close it to retained earnings. So we're going to credit retained earnings. And that's it. So we're gonna close it to retained earnings and then we are done. Okay, so debit rev service revenue, debit sales revenue, credit retained earnings. All right, so if you got that, let's move on to the second part here. The second part here is we are going to close all of our expense accounts into retained earnings. So to close them out, we're gonna do the opposite of what they already are. So they are currently debits, so we would need to credit them. So let's do that first. We'll credit, we'll start from the bottom and work our way up because we know that our debits must equal our credits. So in this case, uh, the first one that we're going to credit just to show you how it works is internet service expense. So we're going to credit internet service expense for 125. Pretty good, right? All right, next one, advertising expense. So to close that, it's a debit right now. We're gonna have to credit it, $500. So advertising expense. Good there. All right, the next one, salaries and wages expense. It's a debit now. To close it out, we'll need to credit it, $1,600. So salaries and wages expense for $1,600. And then now we've completely closed out all of the expense accounts. Now the question is, is what do we do next? Well, the next thing what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to make our debits equal our credits. Right now we have a credit balance of 2225. In order to close it out, we'll have to debit 2225. So that's what we're gonna do here. And we're gonna debit it to where? Well, again, if we look at our 
uh, information up here, it says our retained earnings. So we're gonna debit retained earnings. And now we're good. All of our expense accounts have now been closed. All right, moving to the third one here. We're gonna close the dividend accounts to retain earnings. Problem here, I don't have any dividends. Someone could say bad planning, just didn't do it. But let me kind of show you what that would look like. So dividends would normally be right up here. So it would be like dividends. And that dividends is going to be a debit because it's on the left side of the equation. So normal increases would be a debit. So let's say it's a thousand dollars. So the closer will have to credit dividends. So dividends credit for a thousand dollars. And then we're going to debit. And again, we're going to debit retained earnings. And then we're done. So again, if we did have dividends, the dividends would usually be a debit. To close it out, we have to do the opposite. So we're gonna credit the dividends account, and then we're left with what's left, and that's gonna come out of the retained earnings. Why is it gonna come out of the retained earnings? That's because it's not no longer being retained. So we need to reduce the retained earnings by $1,000 to show that that's been distributed to the shareholders, and then the shareholders can do whatever they want with that $1,000. Dollars. So that is a walkthrough of the closing journal entry. And with that, that completes the accounting cycle. And so um, what we've done over the past couple of sections is we've kind of gone through journal entries. Uh, we've kind of gone through the balance sheet and the income statement. We haven't done the statement of cash flows, but we'll do that later. But generally speaking, we're doing all of these journal entries. And then at the end of the period, we're going to summarize them up to the unadjusted trial balance. Then we need to make sure that our revenues and our expenses are properly matched. So we're going to do adjusting entries to make sure our revenues and expense uh, accurately portrays what actually happened during the accounting cycle. Once we've done that, we're gonna prepare the adjusted trial balance. That adjusted trial balance is a clean trial balance in which we can then prepare our income statement balance sheet, statement of cash flows, and our statement of retained earnings. Once we've done that, we gotta get ready for the next year. To do that, we're gonna do some closing entries to close out our revenue expenses and our dividends. So the entries that we talked about in this lesson closes those accounts. Once we've done that, then we're ready for a new year. So hope you enjoyed the, this lesson. We still have three more lessons here where we're actually going to walk you through some examples, um, a little bit more detailed so that you kind of know what is going on in this section. So um, until then, we'll see you in the next lesson. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw, share it with someone. And if you want to help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.